Hello, I'm Aaron Matthew Lariosa, DC-based correspondent with uh, Naval News. I'm here with uh, Ray Sheldon, president of Lados Gibson Cox. Thank you for having us, Ray. My pleasure. So, uh, at Sea Airspace 2024, we saw the MODEP concept for the first time, at least publicly unveiled. Would you be able to update us on any uh, new developments? Yeah, happy to do that. The um, MODEP is an important one, and uh, maybe we'll save that for last. Um, what I'd like to start with is, <clears throat> over here, um, our uh, international light frigate design. This is about a 3,500 ton ship. Um, it is not just a model. Um, the ship is currently in production uh, with an allied nation of the U.S. Um, set for delivery in uh, less than 18 months. So this program will go from concept through design to delivery in three years. Uh, the whole point was to to produce the 21st century FFG-7. Uh, those attributes are uh, lethal, survivable, simple, easy to build. Mm -hmm. And our shipyard partner is proving that it's a simple to build ship. So that's, uh, so that's one update. Um, in our, uh, one of our areas of focus is unmanned platforms. Sea Hunter and uh, our monohull solution, Ranger, uh, as you I'm sure your audience knows, made um, a, a circumnavigation of the Pacific Rim uh, a year and a half ago. Um, you know, groundbreaking. Nobody's done that with unmanned platforms uh, to date. Um, you know, high operational availability, no problems, um, and the ships are now back on the West Coast doing other missions. So in addition to Sea Hunter, um, we've developed uh, this Archer concept, this is a 40-foot containerable, uh, multi-use, high-speed, uh, autonomous platform. You notice uh, diesel engine powered, actually outboard powered, diesel outboard powered, so um, you know, no fuel issues on naval vessels. Uh, the um, ALPV, this is a solution for contest congested logistics. Um, this is an 80-footer uh, um, with Cargo bays, uh, very, very simple, simple single screw propulsion system. Uh, this is something that can make a trans Pacific voyage uh, with uh, in a low signature environment, um, very low freeboard. So, uh, and then finally, this is um, a downsized and simplified uh, Ranger. So, monohull, um, smaller uh, cargo deck, but all of the um, autonomy and propulsion system attributes that were proven over the last decade in Sea Hunter. You see? And uh, if we look uh, up top, uh, I think, is this related to the light trigger program you were talking about earlier? Yeah, it yeah. does. This is a MODAP model here. Okay. okay. Um, obviously, so I think I should make the point, this is, these models are not to scale. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And the, um, this would be one of the configurations of a MODEP conversion. Uh, so the idea behind MODEP is that there are a significant number of cold stacked uh, modular offshore drilling units um, that uh, are nearly new. Um, they're surplus to need in the Gulf of Mexico at this time. Um, they are very large, you know, like 700, 7,500 square meters of deck space. Um, they uh, are very robust. They are self-propelled. They have extremely large amounts of tankage. Um, they have workshops. They're very, very flexible. So when we introduced the idea at Sierra Space last year, we were focused on one particular mission. Uh, since then, we've expanded. We've done the engineering to expand those, uh, the mission set, uh, really to cover the full scope of uh, the logistics needs of the Navy. So going beyond a simple uh, missile and air defense platform, albeit one with a massive number of missiles, uh, we now have a solution that um, could, in many cases, simultaneously be a subtender, a logistics hub, still retaining that BMD capability. Um, uh, hospital ship, I think that's sort of standalone. Uh, but a very, very capable hospital or disaster relief platform and, um, you know, even an unmanned platform mothership. Mm. You know, the unmanned platform, that's something uh, we didn't see at Sea Airspace, so that must be a pretty recent development. 
Uh, yes, over the past six months or so, um, yeah, we've recognized, and, and a key thing here is that with the exception of the hospital ship mission, which is simply not cons you know, compatible with a military mission, uh, the platforms are so large and flexible that uh, most of these missions can coexist, although we have done somewhat tailored versions of each. These uh, are shallow draft, they're variable draft, which means that the, um, we can do what the U.S. Navy did during World War II for re refit and repair, which is to pull back to Pacific atolls with their you know, internal sheltered harbors. Um, despite the massive size of this thing, it can ballast up, it can you know, go through the channel, ballast down if it needs to, um, and then conduct missions like uh, submarine repairs, logistics, um, we've got that. The um, reloading at sea, yes. key thing. Um, so when we got into reloading at sea, it really became obvious that there were, you know, there was one principal bottleneck, and that is um, loading missiles one at a time. So the um, so what the team came up with was something we call speed loader, um, and and the, the idea is very simple. Um, uh, you know, a frame with um, the appropriate mechanical systems and control systems that allow us to plug into the storage bays um, on MODEP or even ashore for that matter, um, pull up um, a, you know, a number of missiles, a signif very significant number of missiles, and then move across to the receiving vessel. You can see that frame there in blue uh, as a representation. The um, and then drop them in. So we're loading, you know, six or eight at a time in the, in the same time that you would normally do one with a single lift type approach. So I, I apologize, we don't have um, the full engineering illustration of this, but um, but that's still in development and just a little bit sensitive at this point. But the um, we see that as um, a force multiplier. So MODUP doesn't need to have speed loader to be effective, but it becomes far more effective if we can do that logistics and reload mission quickly. Uh, since unveiling the concept in April of 2024, um, have you gotten interest from either domestic or international customers? Well, our focus is on domestic customers. Um, and absolutely, yes. Uh, also, we have narrow down our shopping list of um, uh, platforms for conversion. Um, we've done some initial inspections. We've talked to the owners, um, talked to the facilities that um, would do the conversions, which brings me maybe to the last important point, which is we can do all of this without touching the naval current U.S. Navy construction uh, industrial base. So that's an important point because the, um, uh, as great as these platforms would be, if it means delaying a submarine or delaying, uh, you know, an Arleigh Burke or Heavens for Fen, delaying um, Constellation, it's maybe not a good trade-off. But um, we can bring all this capability and tap, you know, one of the uh, most capable and productive parts of our maritime industrial base, which is the offshore world. So. Um, so I'll leave you with that point. Any questions for me? Uh, you know, this uh, when we first covered this, uh, a lot of people saw it as a pretty unconventional concept, and of course there were some skeptics. What would you tell to the skeptics about this concept? Well, the skeptics have been coming around as they get closer to it. Um, so that's that's what I would you know want you to understand. Um, so so the next few, what I would say about. Uh, well, really, all of the things I've been talking to you about, um, at Gibson Cox, we understand that um, that there's a limited win window to bring a lot more capability, um, you know, into the U.S. Navy, and so uh, th we have been looking for ways to do that. And you, you heard me say as I was walking you through these other concepts, what did I keep saying? Lethal, survivable, simple, and easy to build. The, um, and uh, those last two are just as important as the first two. If, you, if we can't build them quickly and field them,
then um, it's not worth doing. Uh, MODAP is sort of the pinnacle of that because somebody else already built them and they're available for a fraction of their original build price so they're highly cost effective. Um, we've done in the last nine or ten months we've done a lot of engineering and analysis work, sea keeping analysis, uh, you know, motions, acceleration, structural analysis, um, and as I said earlier, uh, we've had discussions with the owners and the facilities that would do the conversions. Um, so we've matured this a great deal. Um, we always want to be challenged. So um, if there's concerns about, uh, so my an answer to skeptics is, tell me what the problem is. Um, we'll, we'll address it because that's what we've been doing. You know, one by one, we've been going into the solution, addressing the challenge, and uh, you know, kind of knocking it down. All right. Thank you so much, Ray. I appreciate it. Okay. My pleasure. Thank you. Good talking.